definitely a musky. 100% a musky, brother. Let's go. Oh, dude, this is a decent fish, too. He's pissed. You take a couple steps back. Right there. Oh, it's a tank, dude. You got him? Yeah, it is. You got him? Got him. Yeah! Yes! Woo! All right, hold that. Hold the net. Hold the net. I got to drop an anchor. On the DK! Let's go! That's a pig. What is up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. Guys, it's been a while since I've done a video. Super busy this year. It was a crazy year. We've been working on the house. I've been super busy at work, trying to get as much time as I can to do some fishing. And unfortunately, it's been months since I've posted a video. Now guys, I'm coming off of probably the best musky year I've ever had. I've caught more fish this year. I've caught more fish over 40 inches this year. I had so much fun. I had opportunities to fish with guys like Todd Leopardi up on Great Lake St. Clair, to fish with a lot of local guys here, uh, friends that I have over at Chapter 16 Muskies Inc. It's been just a phenomenal year on the water and I'm just super pumped about it. I really wanna get some time to get back into putting some content out. Now you guys know on my channel, I focus on sharing what I'm learning throughout the year. That's my goal here with this particular episode. I want to share some tips about trolling. Now, some of you are going to roll your eyes at me because you're out there casting for muskies. I've really grown to love trolling. I've grown to love it because of its technical side. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just throwing baits out the back of the boat, eating chips all day and drinking beer. It's, there's a very technical aspect to the trolling game that really you have to kind of refine if you want to catch more fish. Now, in this episode, trolling, you know, I'm focused on muskies, obviously. That's what I love to do is chase muskies. But just these couple of tips I'm going to cover applies to all species. You know, when you're out there trolling, you have to understand certain elements of that game in order to be effective on the water. So first and foremost, one of the most important aspects to trolling is understanding your gear. And one thing that has really helped me kind of dial in my trolling is understanding the reels that I'm using, okay? And this is kind of interesting because I've heard guys talk about this before. And to me, this is something that's changed the game because Number one, it's giving me more confidence on the water, knowing that this reel is working correctly. And really it's with that confidence boost, you know, it's helping me really dial in where these baits are running in the column. All right, so say you guys are using the Okuma Convector reels. That's what I have right here. That's an Okuma Convector 30D. This is the standard reel that I use for trolling. Are there better reels on the market? Absolutely. Okuma makes cold water, probably a better reel in a lot of people's minds. I've used both. I really like both. I've settled on the convectors. They're just comfortable for me and I don't fish as much as normal people or, you know, fish as much as guides. So really the wear and tear isn't as bad for the convector for me. So what did I mean by understanding your reel? Well, what this boils down to is this has a line counter, right? So if you've trolled for muskies or you've trolled for maybe Great Lakes walleye or whatever, most of those reels have line counters. Now, one of the most important aspects to this is understanding if this line counter is actually accurate, okay? And a lot of times when you spool these up with say like Andy Braid, 
you know, I've got 80 pound. This is 325 yards. You have to do the math on here, probably put some backing. You want to get this reel as full as possible with that line so it's going to function at the highest level possible. Okay, so the first order of business, before I start the season, what I've started doing with my reels, if I, I have a brand new reel here, I need to spool this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the math, I'm gonna put my backing on, I'm gonna load my braid on there, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this guy right here, just this standard 100 foot tape measure, and I'm gonna take that guy and put it out in the back of my house in the alley, and I'm gonna run that out to about 110 feet. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark off every 10 feet to 110 feet, and I'm gonna pull line like zero to 20 on the tape, then zero to 30, zero to 40, all the way to 110 feet of line. Why am I doing that? Well, I want to make sure that this line counter is actually putting out the amount of line that's on that reel. Okay, so that was the first thing for me. And what I found was, you know, let's say you have a, a full spool. Well, at 110 feet, I'm losing feet. By the time I got to 110, I was probably like 10 feet off. That lure was actually 120 feet back. So that's pretty accurate, it's pretty close. It's not gonna change the trolling game that much for you. But if this reel is half full, I've noticed that that number is way off. And I don't know if it's just me, I don't know if other people have done this, but you're talking feet, you know, every five to 10 feet, you're, you're off a number of feet whenever this, this reel is not spooled all the way full. That's important because as the year goes on, you get snags, you cut, you put new leaders on, you're losing that line. So it's important to number one, check these, make sure you're getting 50 feet at actually 50 feet of line using your tape measure and always watch the amount of line you have on your spool. Okay, that's important. That's helped me a lot. And it's really made sure that when I'm trolling baits like what I have here in front of me, you know, it's matching that line up with what's on the depth charts. And that's helping me get a better understanding of where my baits are running and giving me the confidence that this reel is accurate when I'm sending a bait out there to catch a muskie. Okay, so that's the first tip that's really helped me from a trolling standpoint. Understand your reels, whatever reel you're using. There's hundreds of reels on the market. There's a lot better reels than what I have with the convector. I just really like the clicker on the convectors. I really like those reels. I seem to get good use out of them and they just work for me. So, you know, same with braid. Everybody has their preference. I'm not gonna tell you guys what to use. That's not for me to decide for you. I like the Andy braid. This is something I've started using here in the last couple of years. I actually get it through Trophy Time Leaders and Lures, Mr. Steve Gold. If you fish for muskies, you know who Steve Gold is. You know what Trophy Time Leaders and Lures are. He sells this Andy braid for a really good price and it just holds up really well. So, you know, do what you want with line. There's Cortland, that's probably one of the best on the market. The Suffix 832 has always been very good to me. You know, those are dealer's choice. Those are things that are up to you, you know, to kind of figure out and, and get comfortable with. All right, guys, so the second major thing that has really helped me progress while trolling, it's helped me catch more fish, and it's really helped me gain a lot more confidence on the water. What is that? Well, one of the problems with musky fishermen is we have a tendency to buy every single lure out there on the market because it looks cool. It looks cool in the water, the paint jobs are awesome, and they're just big, pretty baits, and we just love collecting these things, right? That is awesome, that's great. That's a, that's a cool part of this industry and musky fishing. But what I found through the years is I'm buying all these lures and I have no idea, number one, how deep they go. Number two, you know, what, what type of action they have a lot of times. Um, number three, when, you know, when to use these things because there's probably a time of year to run specific baits that are gonna work better than others. So. You know, these are all things that you learn as you progress, but the one thing that has really helped me as a muskie fisherman, and again, this would help you as a walleye fisherman if you're out there trolling, maybe for, for lakers even, is understanding where your bait's at in the water column. Okay, years ago, we used to chuck baits out of the back of the boat, and we used to just troll all day. 
No idea where that bait's at in the water column. You know how many times guys have told me they just chuck a bait out of the back of the boat and go? They don't have line counters. They have no idea where these baits are running. They don't look at the depth charts on them. You know, a lot of times, like, you, you'll go out to a site, and I'll use, like, this Boss Shad, for example. You can go out to the site, and, like, Paul will give you a decent depth chart, right? It'll say, like, you know, this bait will go X deep at 10 feet of line. Okay, that's great. That's awesome. That's beautiful. I love that. It really helps us to try to hone in these baits. However, I've noticed as well as many, many, many other people have noticed that when you have a cedar bait or a wooden bait, every bait's a little bit different. You know, they talk about the magic wood. They talk about how, you know, some wood's more buoyant than other wood. Um, it's just, it's crazy when you think about it. You know, for example, this baker, this is a beautiful muscular. Zach's baits catch tons of fish, man. It's one of the best baits on the market. We know this, you know, but it's still a wooden bait. And what I've noticed with any of the baits that are wooden, a lot of times they're a little bit inconsistent when it comes to depths. You know, you're trusting these depth charts, right? You're going out and you're saying, if I'm gonna put 20 feet of line on this DK right here, based on the depth chart, I know that this is gonna be about 10 feet down, right? That's what the depth chart says. And for this bait, that's 100% accurate. How do you validate that as a musky fisherman? How do you validate that these baits are running where you need them to run? Big question mark. Sometimes you just don't know. You have to go with the information you have. The absolute biggest thing that has helped me as a musky fisherman, particularly with trolling, has been a tool that my good friend Evan Shaw had shown me a few years back. You know, this isn't some major big secret, um, but this is something that Evan was doing. To me, was more innovative because of the application. And Evan's a super smart guy. He's a super good dude. And he was willing to share that information with me, you know, number one. But a tool that will help you dial in your musky lures in the water column. Some guys know about this. Some guys don't. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about a fish hawk, okay? And this is a fish hawk right here. This is the model of fish hawk. Now, understand that there are multiple models of this unit out there. <clears throat> there's this standard one, and then there's a whole system they have. You know, for the price, the price has gone up considerably on these, but for the price and having a peace of mind, knowing where I'm running these musky lures in the water column, this has changed the game for me. This has changed the game for several of my friends. You spend the money to make sure you know exactly where these baits are in the column when you're trolling, right? We haven't even talked about speed. Trolling speed changes depths of baits. You know, different times of the year changes where you're fishing depth wise. You know, you have to understand where these lures run in the column and you have to understand when to run them, you know, certain times of the year. So what does this fish hawk do? How does it work? Well, simply put, this has a nice little clip on it. If you guys can see that clip, what you do with this is you essentially turn it on. You have settings here. So it comes with a nice little user guide. I'll show you guys this. And this little user guide just, it gives you how it works right here, how it works. And it gives you all the instructions and all the configurations you need to set up on this thing. It's super simple. So I have this dialed in. If I hit start here, <clears throat> it goes by depth and it has water temperature. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm trying really hard to get it there. So what you guys do here, first of all, is you send your bait, send it back where you want it. If you want to try this Shoss Miner, if you guys want to try to send this Shoss Miner, you want to know where this is at. You set it on your rod, wherever you have it in your spread, you put it back, you put the rod, you know, at an angle to where it would be at in the holder. Okay, that's what I try to do. Get as accurate as possible. Now, once you got that bait back there, you clip this bad boy to the line and you full send. You hit the start button and you full send it down the line. Okay, what this is gonna do, it's gonna travel down the line, it's gonna give you the water temperature, it's gonna give you the water depth of where this hits. A lot of times, depending upon your leader, if you've got the beads or some kind of leader stop, it'll stop there. So you gotta understand that because if you're using a three or four foot leader, it's gonna be a little different, it's gonna be off. 
Most of the time, this will ride all the way down your line. It'll hit your bait. You pull the rod up, straight reel it in, keep it high, pull the bait in, and then you hit view. And after you hit view, it'll tell you the water depth that this bait was running, the water temperature, and that in itself is enough information for you to validate where your musky lures are running in the column. Now, guys have told me, go out there and find a hump. That works too. That absolutely works. You can go out there and find a hump at 10 feet and run your baits down there. Problem is, hump's 10 feet down. What if you want to know where your bait's running at 6 feet? This tool will help you do that, okay? Bottom line, anytime a piece of technology makes your life easier out there on the water, it's going to help you and it's going to transition into you catching more fish. This tool has been an absolute lifesaver for me absolute lifesaver. It has changed the game. Now do your research because this unit, it's got a battery that lasts for about five years. You cannot replace the battery in these. You have to buy a brand new unit. So I bought this for like 130 bucks, like a couple years ago. They're about 180 to 200 bucks now. You know, you just got to understand that's an investment. You know, it's a five year investment for you. If you get six, seven years out of the battery, that's great. But you're paying $200 to know where your baits are running at in the column for five or six years. Okay, that's important. People talk about the price tags. It's sticker shock. It's like buying a new set of golf clubs up front. You're gonna have those golf clubs for 10 years, but you're gonna spend a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks on them, you know, up front. It's the value long term of the tool that you're using that's gonna help you over multiple years. So if you're trolling, whether you're Great Lakes walleye trolling, and a lot of guys already use these for downriggers and things like that. Um, if you're out there musky fishing or you're trolling for, you know, lake trout or whatever, you know, this is a, this is an excellent tool that will help you control where your lures are running at in the column. You know, I know that these Leos are one of the most consistent baits on the market, even though they're cedar. They just absolutely are. Todd does a great job. I don't know how he does it because a lot of the other baits I've looked at are not as consistent. I know that I can put a mojo out there 25 feet back and I'm about five feet down. You know, that's, that's accurate, but I can validate it with that and just know for sure. And then guys, you know, if you get bit, one of these baits goes off, then you have something to go off of. Maybe you pull some baits up a little higher, maybe you drop them a little lower. But bottom line, anytime you can get an edge out there on the water, it's a good thing. This tool will help you do that. So check out the Fish Hawk. It has made a complete difference in my fishing here in the state of Pennsylvania. You know, the last part of this is you gotta understand the fish for trolling, okay? That's been a huge help to me. Fishing with guides like Banging Bottom, like Muddy Creek Fishing Guides, you know, two of the best guide services that I've ever fished with. Um, you've got guys like in Ohio, like Chad Harmon. You have guys in West Virginia, like Chase Gibson. You know, a lot of guys are out there doing this thing from a guide perspective. You guys take a guide trip. You can cut that learning curve in half and that's been extremely beneficial for me over the last couple of years. You take that information from those guides, you apply it to your fishing. You start understanding how these fish operate, whether they're walleyes or they're muskies or they're lake trout. You gotta understand the fish to understand, you know, where these baits need to be run. Bottom line, when you guys get to that point, I'm not saying I'm there yet, I'm not saying I'm a good fisherman. I'm not saying I'm catching all sorts of fish. I'm just saying these are useful things that have helped me put more fish in the bag and really have kind of just helped me grow as an angler because that's what this is about. So that's all I wanted to cover. Just understand your reels in the line and understand to make sure that those line counters are accurate. Understand where your baits are running in the column. Understand the bait itself, how deep it goes, how much line you need to get there, and then use a tool like the fish hawk to validate it, period. It'll help you guys hone in when you're out there on the water doing some trolling. All right, guys, I just wanted to do a quick video, talk a little bit about what I've learned. Those have been a few things that have really impacted my fishing and have helped me put more fish in the boat. These are all things that I've learned from different people, and I'm super thankful for those opportunities. And I uh, can't wait to get out there in 2023 and get back out there on the water. You know, I will say um, it's been a busy couple of months. Um, I haven't really posted much. Uh, I just, I haven't been doing the YouTube thing. I want to get back into it this winter. I will say to you guys though, I recently purchased a boat. And it's been something that's been on my mind for years. Um, ever since I was a young kid, we wanted to do this. 
Um, I finally made my dream come true this year. My wife, Deanna, was there to support me and, and to help me make a purchase. I ended up with an Alumacraft uh, Lunker 165. It's a 2012, it's a used boat. Um, the guy that I bought it off of was just such a good dude. Uh, it was a super awesome experience. Uh, I still talk to him. He's just a really good person that took really care of this boat. So I'm hoping that I can do the same. Uh, I'm hoping that I can take care of it and not ruin it. But the point to me bringing that up is guys, I'm going to get a YOLO tech stick. I'm going to get that bad boy in and we're going to get out there in 2023 and we're going to do more filming. We're going to just have fun. We're going to put some clips together. I might not post everything, but I'm super excited to get out there on the water, run my own rig, take my lumps. I'm going to take a beating out there, um, but learn as much as I can, figure it out. And hopefully I can get some cool videos made. Um, of just multi-species too. I want to do a lot of musky fishing, but I want to get out there and take my dad walleye fishing. I want to get out there and do some crappy fishing. I want to do some perch fishing. You know, it's just things that, um, you know, I haven't done in a very long time. So I'm excited to do the musky thing and I'll be trolling all of these baits and all of the other thousand musky lures that I have sitting here in my office. So super excited about that. Now, if you guys liked this content, just me talking, you know, about what I've learned, kind of where I'm at, um, hit that like button for me. If you guys like this content overall, you know, feel free to subscribe to my channel too. I, uh, I really appreciate you guys and all the support. Um, I will say we started a little venture uh, about a year ago. We got the Muskie Hunks podcast. Um, I'm super excited about that. We got Big O's, Bucktails, Owen Seaman, um, Tom Venata from Pennsylvania Monsters on Instagram. We got uh, our, our northernmost correspondent, Nick Fiesler, and uh, our boy, Mr. Donnie Swink of Swink Outdoors here. All local Western Pennsylvania guys. Uh, Nick's up in, you know, up a little bit further north, but all Western PA guys that just love to talk muskies and fish for muskies. And, you know, if you guys are out there thinking about this muskie thing, check out local chapter of Muskies Inc., chapter 16, which is the Three Rivers chapter. That's how I met a lot of my friends that I like to go musky fishing with. Um, shout out to my buddy Dano too. He's been with me there the whole time. Um, he's taught me a lot about this sport and I'm looking forward to getting out on the water more with Dano in 2023. All right guys, I really appreciate the time. Sorry it took so long to get through this. You know, take a look at this stuff. Hopefully it helps. Hey, drop me a message on uh, Instagram, Facebook, on YouTube, let me know how these are going. I'm gonna keep putting some videos out here for a little while and we'll see what kind of response we get. So I appreciate all of you guys. We'll just say tight lines. We'll see you next time.